At 11.25 tomorrow night, Dustin Hoffman and Bruce Willis star in the crime thriller, Billy Bathgate. Good evening. A man's being questioned tonight after the actor who plays Fred Elliott in Coronation Street was stabbed at his home in Manchester. 62-year-old John Savident was rushed to the city's Royal Infirmary with neck injuries after the incident. He was released from hospital late this afternoon. Emma Murphy reports. Leaving hospital this evening, John Savident appeared pale and gaunt, his normally booming voice obviously weak. And I don't feel at all well, uh, but thanks to the great staff of the hospital, they've made a few or torturous hours very comfortable and very warming and welcome. And I want to say thank you to all the people who sent me flowers. I mean, I'm quite overwhelmed and cards from fans and charity organisations and everything. I, I really can't thank you enough. Just 12 hours earlier, he'd been stabbed in the neck at his luxury flat. Detectives are still questioning a man arrested yards from Mr. Savident's home shortly after the incident in the early hours of this morning. During the day, more details became clear. The 62-year-old actor, most famous for his role as Fred Elliott in Coronation Street, but an accomplished stage performer, had been in his one-bedroom apartment in Roselle Square at around 4 a.m. Neighbours had seen a man moving between the flat and garage to the rear of the property, and within moments, the police and paramedics were on the scene. John Savident joined the cast of the Granada Soap in 1994 as butcher Fred Elliott. Today, colleagues wished him well. The overriding feeling is shock. People phoning in this morning, cast members wanting to send messages to John of, of support and, and real shock that this could happen. The man in custody is being questioned at Bootle Street Police Station in Manchester. A man from Lancashire who served 17 years in prison for a double murder has been released on bail by the Court of Appeal. Peter Fell from Accrington was living in Bournemouth when he was jailed for killing two women who were attacked as they walked their dogs in 1982. But his barrister has told the appeal judges new evidence shows he could not have been at the scene and his confessions were unsafe. A full appeal hearing is due in January. Union leaders are to hold emergency talks with management at a clothing factory in Derbyshire over the future of jobs. Bentwood has announced it wants to end production at its site in Glossop as part of a company restructure. The firm has already closed a factory in Cheshire this year. Michelle May reports. Staff arrived for work today not knowing how much longer they'll keep their jobs. Bentwood is a major employer in Glossop. Many of the 306 workers have been at the factory for more than 20 years. The company manufacture lingerie and knitwear for Marks & Spencer. But after more than 50 years, Bentwood is announcing its second site closure in the northwest in just two months. The company says no orders have been lost and it will relocate as many staff as possible to sites in Altrincham in Greater Manchester and Nottingham. But this came as little comfort to workers today. They're just, they're just oh, letting us all down. Geez. We've all worked there. There's families that work in that factory. It's going to be a ghost town now, Glossop. It relies on this firm keeping them going. In October, Bentwood announced the closure of its factory in Runcorn in Cheshire, with the loss of more than 200 jobs. Unions are fighting further redundancies and the loss of another major site. You can imagine 306 jobs disappearing is going to make a tremendous difference to the money that comes into this particular town. Bentwood declined to be interviewed today, but dismissed rumours that the Glossop site has been sold to a leading supermarket chain. Unions have a 90-day period to discuss the restructure plan with management. It's highly likely that workers will have to spend Christmas and the New Year not knowing what the future holds. A ferry which ran aground off the Lancashire coast earlier today has finally arrived at its destination tonight in Northern Ireland. 87 passengers were stranded when the ship became marooned in the channel outside Fleetwood. Alison Tarpey reports. The P&O ferry, the European pioneers, set off from Fleetwood Harbour at 4 o'clock this morning, bound for Larne in Northern Ireland. By half past four, the ship had run aground just 200 yards from the beach in what were seemingly good weather conditions. None of the crew or passengers who were stranded on board for seven hours were hurt in the incident. It can be dangerous. The vessel, fortunately, did actually ground on a fairly flat area of sand. Had it been closer to the edge of the channel, then obviously as the tide went out, uh, it could be a situation where the vessel was resting on the edge and could have toppled over, but fortunately this wasn't the case. 
It's not known what caused the ferry to beach, although Coast Guard said there was no mechanical or steering failure. This comes just four days after a Spanish boat ran aground in the port on Monday. The trawler is still on its side, blocking the entrance to the fishing dock as a salvage team continued to work on her. It's a narrow channel, you know, Fleetwood Channel is a very narrow channel, but uh, the incident with this one and the, the trawler, I think, is just pure coincidence. They're totally unrelated. The p and ferry was successfully refloated at high tide and then travelled to deeper waters to carry out safety checks. Mechanics then gave the vessel the all clear and she sailed on to complete her journey. Liverpool Crown Court has heard that one of the alleged child sex abuse victims of former Everton star David Jones had made complaints about eight other members of staff at a special school. Mr Jones denies 14 charges of abuse relating to four different boys. The offences are all alleged to have taken place while the 44-year-old worked as a carer in a residential school on Merseyside. Six nurses have been suspended from duty at Alderhey Children's Hospital in Liverpool. Officials there say two internal investigations have been launched into nursing practices. Alderhey, the largest children's hospital in Europe, is at the centre of a government investigation into the removal and storage of organs but none of the suspensions is said to be connected with that inquiry. And there's less than 24 hours to go before three contestants from the North West battle it out with ten others in the Stars on Your Eyes live grand final. Giving everyone a run for their money will be a slice of Congleton's very own version of Meatloaf, a Paul McCartney from Lee, and a Dion from Manchester, giving Sue the runaround. Best of luck to them all. And that's the region's news this Friday evening. Granada News is back tomorrow. Our first bulletin is at five past one in the afternoon. But for myself and the late team, good night. Granada weather. Today's satellite sequence shows a lot of cloud down there to the southwest. That's associated with a low pressure area and frontal systems, and that's bringing rain our way. So we've got cloudy skies for the rest of this evening and tonight, and that will give outbreaks of rain and drizzle, more especially, I think, towards the Lancashire and Cumbria coasts. It's going to be a mild night with temperatures rising, if anything, to 10 or 11 degrees Celsius, and those southerly winds will be strong, maybe up to gale force at times over the sea. Now tomorrow it's a cloudy, misty, grey, dull start with outbreaks of rain and drizzle. Gradually that will push away eastwards as brighter weather moves in from the west. Any sunshine will be confined to tomorrow afternoon. Top temperatures tomorrow on the mild side at 12 or 13 degrees Celsius. Saturday's not a bad day, but Sunday there'll be a lot of blustery showers around. For a more detailed five-day forecast, call Weather Update on 09068 Granada Action, sponsored by Cheshire Building Society, supporting your community. Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a student nurse and former volunteer at Aintree University Hospital. Our hospital runs a volunteer scheme that aims to give support to patients, relatives and staff. The scheme is an integral part of hospital life. My experience as a volunteer is very rewarding and reinforced my desire to become a nurse. But if you want nothing more than the satisfaction of knowing you're improving somebody's quality of life and you feel like you would like to help, call the Aintree Hospital Volunteer Scheme for more information on 0151 529 2408.